You know what makes a neighborhood a neighborhood? All those wonderful crazies out there. The lovers and the liars, the players and the haters, the hookers, the dentists, the Jews for Jesus. But that's cool, because most times those crazy people out there, they're out there, somewhere where you don't have to deal with them. Most times. You see, when you run a neighborhood barbershop, that makes you the center of the urban universe. And all of those people, they don't keep their craziness out there. They bring it in here. Ramadan. Ramadan Dupree. Did you just say you were going to hire Ramadan? What? Why would you bring someone like that here? Hell no! I got a better idea. How about we put a sign outside that says, bad shit, come on in. I know you just didn't say you're getting Ramadan food. I had to leave the sectarian violence of Nigeria to work with Ramadan Dupree. What? Why? Hey, hey, hey! Now what the hell is wrong with y'all? What the hell is wrong with us? What the hell is wrong with you? You were hiring Ramadan to pre to work in your shop. Now I know you had ex-cons in your shop before. Thugs. Hooligans. Illegal aliens, hot-headed girls, and white kids who think they can cut a black man's head. Now, see, really, that is what you call an open dope policy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, will somebody please explain to me why y'all are freaking out? Ramadan's just a young kid who needs a break. Oh, uh, man, that ain't how it is. Ramadan is an urban legend, a straight badass. He robbed a bank, <laughs> shot his way out, <laughs> and killed 15 cops. Hell no, that is not what happened. He got into a gang fight at a bar. <laughs> he was shot, stabbed, <laughs> still took out 15 bangers with his bare hands. No, 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 I, I'll tell you what happened. He didn't kill no 15 people. No, sir, just one. One man. Get your hand out my pocket! Wait, wait. Audubon Ballroom? Ramadan shot Malcolm X. That was like 40 years ago. This kid's about 25. How's it possible he could have been one of the shooters? Evil doesn't die. Yeah, okay. See how these stories are all, you know, big and, uh, and, and big. They're, uh, Yinka. They're hyperbole. Hyperbole, okay? That's all they are. What the Africans said. They said, let's just squash the talk, be cool, and get a brother a chance. No, no, we need to give you a chance to explain why you hiring somebody like Romadon Dupree. This is my shop. I don't have to explain shit. <laughs> okay, let me explain it like this. What you have to understand is Ramadal is kin. Wait, he's my wife's kin. My sister's husband's brother's wife's uncle's kid is getting out of prison, and I want you to give him a job. What? My sister's husband's brother's wife's uncle's kid is getting out of prison, and I want you to give him a job. What? Don't make me repeat all that. You don't have to repeat any of it. I didn't mean what is in what you say. I mean, what is in what the hell makes you think I'd give some kid a job? My sister's brother's husband's wife's uncle. Auntie's roommate's clown. And no, I'm not giving him a job. Now, maybe I told my wife, Jen, no. But the thing you got to understand, when you're in a long-term committed relationship, women have a way of doing things that make saying no something that's not going to happen. Okay. Okay. Just got your hair done. I'm about to mess all oh, that. <laughs> hey, that last part stays in the shop. Running a barbershop is kind of like being at an all-you-can-eat restaurant. Right when you think it's all out of nonsense, Dukes are hazards. The chef cooks you a fresh plate of craziness. Rush hour three. This shit ain't even made yet. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Can someone please direct me to Miss Terry Jones? What? Miss Jones, have you no shame? Life is like a flower from the kingdom of heaven. Take pity on your flower. Use love to make the right choice. Good day. Everybody might want to pull up chairs. I'm thinking this is going to be a long explanation. I don't know who the hell that was. I don't. I've never seen him before. Well, he sure knew you. Well, you see, Terry's lack of recall is symptomatic of a particular mental state that many of the finer doctors call limited rage vision. When certain African Americans uh, of color, uh, many in the young generation, go off, <laughs> they get a fire in their eyes, and all they can see is their own anger. What? And they have trouble recalling the subject of their tirade. <laughs> Terry Jones doesn't have anger issues. All I do is speak my mind. Now, if a man does that, he's direct, a straight shooter. Tell it like it is. But if it's a woman, she's got anger issues. Now, you're going to tell all of us who uh, flinch when you move too quickly that you don't go off massively over any little thing. And I say that respectfully. 
Do I go off? Sometimes. But when I go off, it's for a reason. That was the truth. Terry Jones only went off for a reason. Any reason. Big man with your little white collar. Just gonna cut in front of me. Wow. You see Jesus cut in front of people to get to the cross? This is not a Z-rated tire. This is clearly a motherfucking R. Now do not let the skirt fool you because I will beat you like a goddamn man. Big man with your little white sand sirens. You didn't see me crossing the street? You're the one whose HMO better be paid off because I'm about to really go off. It's rarely. Believe me, the only time I go off is when somebody's fucking with me. Whoa. Is that fucking with you or fucking you? Because either way, I'm ready to do both. <laughs> You want to find out? All right, if you're so calm and everything, I'm just saying you can't go 24 hours without losing it. 24 hours? Mm-hmm. Might as well give me the money because you haven't got a chance in hell. It's taking you so long to ring up one damn order. You want your body bag paper plastic? Better get your shit together or I'm going to really go. Whoa! Do not move! You're under arrest. After spending an hour in jail for resisting arrest, Terry was set free by an extremely apologetic detective, Moya Caliente. I can't tell you how sorry we are. This was a complete mistake. Locking your keys in the car is a mistake. What you did is fucked up. <laughs> the way you were gesticulating made you look like an emotionally disturbed person. Not all officers are trained as to what a black woman looks like when she's going off. <laughs> I wasn't going off. I was talking with my hands. And the only reason my hands had to get in the conversation is because that clerk took so damn long to ring me up. No, she was ringing you up solely on purpose. The credit card was flagged, and we asked her to keep you in the store until officers arrived. Apparently, your identity has been stolen, and someone's been running up fraudulent charges. We'd like your help in identifying whoever it is that stole your information. So, do I get a check from the police department, or do I just do your job for free? Thanks, bro. Can I speak with your Kelvin? Sure, what's up? Private day. Oh, shit. I'm having some difficulties with women, and I would appreciate your help. It's in the area of foreplay, of being sexually expressive with women. You mean dirty talk? You, you need help with your dirty talk? Yeah, I don't know what your dirty talk is like, and I do everything I could to keep it that way. I realize it's kind of creepy for two men all alone to discuss sex. So I burned this DVD of myself speaking sexually. Yanka, come on, man. You gonna give me a home porn DVD? Uh, it's not porn. It's just Yinka talking dirty. You say just, like there's some acceptable amount of sex people can put in the home movies. I think Paris Hilton and R. Kelly have taught us no. Mika, come on, man. It's talking dirty. How bad can your dirty talk get? Women run from me. Wait, don't go! You have a problem, you know that? You need Jesus. You have problems, you know that? You need Vishnu. You have problems, you know that? You need High Elohim. <sighs> damn. Yes, damn. No, I mean, damn. You actually got three different religions to agree on something? That shit's impressive. The next morning, the legendary Ramadale Dupree went from being a legend to an employee of my shop. Look for Calvin. Ramadan? Okay. Ramadan. Okay. Ramadan, everybody. Cal. I'm Cal. It's Eddie. It's Isaac. That there's Yankee. Now, I'd like to, we'd all like to welcome you well, to I'm cutting that, man. Right. You're at right there. And you know how to cut, yeah? Yeah. Well, more than just cut, cut. I mean, you know how to style. Well, clearly you do corporal. You know what how I to... say, bitch? First day, and he calls Eddie a bitch. <gasps> Go find your little bill. Where's little bill? Okay. Itch. He called Eddie a bitch. That's not right. Uh, a pain in the ass, a stubborn cuss, and even at that, you gotta get to know him. You don't just walk in, hey, Eddie, how you doing, bitch? Then they gotta go. Well, you have to give Ramadal a chance. This is my shop. I ain't got to do shit. <gasps> it. He's a killer. Give him a chance to do what? Kill people? Oh, just because some people told you Ramadal might be a killer? Um, uh, Ramadal told me he might be a killer, but without using the word might. Well, there you go. Nobody admits to something like that. You know, this reminds me of something I studied at school. You study something like this at community college? Vocational institute, okay? Respect it. You know, you don't just magically wake up one day with a certificate in hotel management. You have to earn it. And one afternoon, we had a lecture on child psychology. And if we take what I remember from the part I say to wake through and apply it to criminal psychology, when Ramadal says he killed somebody, well, that's just a desperate cry for attention.
You know, next time he talks about stabbing somebody or smashing their head in or slitting their throat, you just fight back by killing him with kindness. Kill him with what? Because it didn't sound like there was an actual weapon involved there. Oh, but there is, if you smother him with love. No, you counteract his rage by, say, giving him a candy bar or a humorous Hallmark card. But kindness doesn't have to be monetary. You can just give Ramadan a hug. <laughs> Babe, you don't hug killers. And if more people did, maybe they wouldn't kill. Even though she played it off, Jen was having second thoughts about Ramadan working in the shop. I mean, I'm running around from one meeting to the next. It's, it's intense. I mean, the level that I'm operating on right now, it's intense. This is Jimmy James. Jimmy used to work in the barbershop until he quit to pursue a career in politics. And in a very short time, he'd gone on to become quite a political big shot. At least, according to Jimmy James. But then I get a call from you, and I'm like, intensity? You better settle down. Jen needs a favor. So, Jen, what favor do you need? Or should I say, what problem can I solve for you? Well, one of my relatives is working in the shop now. And there are all these rumors flying around about him, smashing people's heads in or slitting their throat or otherwise killing people. So I was hoping you could get his criminal record so we could find out what he was really convicted for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Criminal record. I, yeah. I don't think I can get access to those. But you're always going on about all those political connections you have. Mommy, I mean, if you were just making all that up. Make a... You see this watch? This is a sonnet. This is what hooked up political big shots wear. It's like a sign to other hooked up political big shots. Hey, other hooked up political big shots, can I do you a secret insider cronyistic favor? That's sad. You know, public service should be about helping people, not money. I know. It's a good thing I got this expensive ass watch. I'll be damn near depressed. You had the eggs, right? As Jen paid for her eggs, Detective Caliente and Terry Jones went looking for the other Terry Jones. Terry Jones. Yeah, I remember a girl came in here using that credit card. You just let her buy whatever? I have been shopping here for two damn years. And you hit me up for my ID every time I come in. How come she got a pass? She was nice. They should have tipped you off, dumbass. Oh, she was nice and pleasant and non-physically threatening. Oh, um, it's me, Daniela Bibolota. Oh, yeah, and, and she knew how to say please and thank you. Really? Hmm. As in I'd thank you if you'd please go fuck yourself? Unbelievable. Some girl walks in with a little smile and a smooth attitude, and she gets whatever she wants. Am I really that rough? If by rough you mean hot as fuck, yeah. <laughs> Look, Terry, sometimes you do have a little bit of an attitude. But I know you have a big heart, and if things get hectic, I want you to have my back. I want you to have my back, too? You were just itching for me to sexually harass you. I'm being real. Thing you gotta know is, I'm not good at dealing with people. I grew up in foster homes. The people that watched out for me, they were just in it for the government aid. Kids like me, we had to scrap and fight for everything we got. So no, no, I'm not soft. I'm who I am. And who Terry Jones is, is somebody who is tired of the world cool. fucking yeah. with her. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Check this out. Five, five, Charlie to Central. We've got an emotionally disturbed person with a knife moving in with stun guns. I can't tell you how sorry we are. This was a complete mistake. Stun fucking guns? Totally inappropriate. I would use pepper spray. Speaking of pains in the ass, Ramadan wasn't exactly fitting in. Stop playing in your ass, bitch. When you run a barbershop, you don't only have to deal with daytime bullshit, you get after hours bullshit too. Mine was, did I really want to peek what was on that disc Yink had given me? No, but he put so much effort into the cover art. for uh, Terry Jones. Y'all might want to pull up some chairs. I'm thinking when this is all over, it's going to take a while to explain. So you work for an abortion clinic? No, no, I'm, I'm with a pro-choice advocacy group called Vagina Watch. We just found out some anti-abortion activists hacked into a clinic's computers. 
stole all their records, and was harassing women who'd had consultations. Oh, man. That guy who came in here the other day, he was getting on me because he thought I went to a clinic to get an abortion. He was infringing on your right to choose. No, you don't get it. It's not me. My identity was stolen. I know. It feels that way. But, but be who you want to be. It's your body. Okay. I need to walk away before it's my foot your ass. Exactly. Your choice. Move, bitch. You too, bitch. You watch the disc. Yeah. Uh, Yinka, come on, man. Undulating vagina? It's a vagina. When excited, it undulates. Technically, yeah. But that's the problem. All right, look. I know you're an intelligent, articulate African. Forget intelligent and articulate. Get native. Look, you want to step up your dirty talk, gang? Just got to hit the key phrases. Such as? Hmm. You know what? I'm going to write them down. That way, you can practice them on your own. <clears throat> Whose pussy is that? You're not curious. You sound like you're the lost and found. You know whose pussy it is. She's right there. You're demanding that she tell you you own it. Whose pussy is that? OK, go on to number two. I think you have better luck with number two. I'm going to make that ass say my name. OK, go on to number three. We'll come back to number two. You know you want this dick. You could come on, man. Put something into it. You know you want this dick. I, I'm sure that manages to impress your wife somehow. I wasn't really trying. <laughs> Look, if I was really trying, <laughs> shit. <clears throat> you know you want this dick. I'm gonna make that ass say my name. <laughs> Look, that wasn't 100% of my dirty talk. I'm not gonna stand in the back of the shop and give you 100% of my dirty talk. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> you know you want this dick. You know you want this dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Whose pussy is this? I'm going to make that ass say my name. Bend over so I can get all up in that ass. <laughs> we should go out there and pull up some chairs. This is going to take a while to explain. No, no, you keep that. Meanwhile, Terry found herself in the middle of an abortion debate. Literally. Terry, every action has its consequences, sister. Terry, you're free, black, and 21-ish. Road in V-Wave for nothing. You know what? Honest. One more word out of you, and it's gonna be my foot, your ass. Yeah, as emotionally immature as you are, it's a good thing you got an abortion. Why would I be asking Yinka, whose pussy is this? That doesn't make any sense. It's obvious whose pussy it is. It's not obvious whose it is. You don't have one. I'm just pointing out it's not a declarative statement. My feet hurt. I told you to pull up a chair. Now your feet hurt. Whose fault is that? I, whose pussy is that? Is that what Calvin's been teaching you? That's why you're having trouble with women. Whoa, 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 whoa. A sophisticated man serves his girl cabassier. It makes him think that you're classy. And then you get a drunk and you fuck her. You know, if Kobe Bryant would have had some cabassier on him, he wouldn't have to shell out that $13 million. Man, you want to talk to women, all you guys say is, bitch, get on this. Maybe just bitch. Well, I'm not sure that really is my... Like, I give a fuck, bitch. Can we check something in? I'm the one that's married. Which is why you don't know what you're doing. You see, talking dirty to your wife is like hunting in a zoo. You know you're gonna bag something. Son, I'm gonna teach you how to hunt like an African. I am an African, Andy. A real African. With spears, nose bones and shit. Ooh, lily. Ooh, lily, lily. You have to give me Ramadan's file. Can't. It's a police file. I'm trying to get people to think I got some political juice. But when I left the barbershop, I said I was going to be somebody. And I raised my voice and I pointed my finger, so now I'm kind of obligated to do something. Oh, yeah. What? You remember I helped you bust up that counterfeit ring that was selling off all those knockoffs on AIDS? Wait, you didn't do shit. What you did do was come in to complain that you paid full price for a fake. And I can't even believe you wear that thing. Okay. I know how this works. Whoop. Somebody just dropped $10. Would you look at that? Somebody then dropped $12.
somebody didn't drop $13.52. I will get you the file. Pathetic. Everybody has their price. Glad I broke that 20. I need to talk to you for a minute. No. Look, I read your police file, and quite frankly, I'm disappointed with much of your thug life behavior. And although I understand you've paid your debt to society, you need to understand that gangsterism is a road to no. Now you got one chance to act correctly. Are you hearing me? No. <sighs> I didn't want to have to do this. What the fuck is you doing? It's a hug. I'm hugging away your anger. Don't fight it, just let it go. Yo, for real, get up off me. That's right. Just let the anger get up off of you. So did hugging Ramadal do any good? Yes. Yes, it did. For a moment, before Ramadal started using foul language and threats of violence, I believe I made a difference. <laughs> proud of you, baby. Scared for you, but proud of you. But if I can temporarily change somebody's outlook with one afternoon of child psychology, think of what I could do if I applied the rest of my education. I mean, you don't spend a year and a half studying hotel management because you don't have dreams. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm wasting my life. Wasting? Oh, uh, you're my baby's mama. You're raising our child. Don't tell me you're wasting your life. You're handling the most important job in the world. Come on. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I am. Mm -hmm. I mean, our boy might grow up to be president. Mm -hmm. Might cure cancer. Mm -hmm. And I'm raising him. Mm. That's a heck of a lot more important than running a barber shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next to that, running a barber shop's nothing. <laughs> Your job's important. I already said that. <laughs> and you almost ran the shop to the ground. Oh, twice. <laughs> <laughs> Cal, mm -hmm. could you ease up a little? Huh? I'm having trouble breathing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, hi. One second. I just need one second. Terry, I need to speak with you. No, 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 no. Your life is in the back. Your choice is going to be the only Okay, okay, you know what? Back the fuck up, both of you. If I'm pregnant, not pregnant, it is none of your damn business. Neither of you care about me. All you care about is making noise for your cause, going on about if abortion is right or wrong. You know what's wrong? Women are having the babies, but it's men who write the laws. What you think doesn't matter. Until you start passing something the size of a bowling ball at the tip of your dicks, Leave us women the fuck alone. Good day. Wow, what a bitch. Finally something we can agree on. That night, over at a trendy club known for both its loose women and for serving Cavassier, Eddie was teaching Yinka how to talk with women. So when do we actually talk to women? Only funny boys actually talk to women. See, in my time, Man never let a woman know he liked her. See, but you so-called men today, y'all, y'all want to be all sensitive. Uh, you got Will Smith crying in every movie. Mike Tyson, he don't even want to hurt nobody no more. And that fruit that's married to Star Jones, he was more into the wedding than she was. Eddie, when was the last time you were actually with a woman? 1971. And because it was night, I, of course, had some nighttime bullshit to deal with. This time, in the form of an extremely agitated Terry Jones. Everyone is going on about how nice this bitch is who stole my identity. Then I got these other motherfuckers thinking I had an abortion. All people see me as is an angry black woman who got herself pregnant. How do you think that makes me feel? To be somebody else's idea of a statistic? But you know what, Cal? 38% of black women ages 15 to 25 are virgins. And this shit is pure. I'm no statistic. That still makes you a statistic. But a good statistic. And I am proud of my good statistics. Like my ass being 84% hotter than most women's. OK. You know what, Terry? Before I answered the door, I thought you might be a gangbanger. Now, I'm slightly disappointed that you weren't. Then why did you open the fucking door? Because you were banging on it, yelling, open the fucking door. Look, you may be in control of your sexuality, but sometimes, sometimes, you can be an angry Young lady. Right. I got a problem. So solve it for me. Terry, it's 12.38. I'm not leaving until my problem is solved. So solve it. <sighs> okay, okay. 
If you want to get back at the people that are stressing you, you need to come at them unexpected. Kill them with kindness. Kindness? Yeah. It sounds like some stupid shit. How's it work? Um, you give somebody a candy bar. Or, uh, or give them a hug. Then, as soon as they lower their guard, you can, like, bam, stick them with a knife or something. No, no, you, you don't knife them. But you inflict some kind of trauma. There's no inflicting trauma. And I think you need to quit calling it killing people with kindness because it sounds a lot better than it is. Later, Yinka finally decided to quit Eddie's style of picking up the ladies and give my brand a dirty talk a try. Whose pussy is that? Unfortunately, he tried it out on Detective Caliente. I'm going to make that ass say my name. <laughs> Crying about, bitch. And Terry Jones finally got to kill somebody with kindness. Terry? Terry Jones? My name's Nia. Mm, I don't know, maybe you see me around here a few times. Look, I'm the one who lifted your credit card information. I am so sorry. Look, I really, really needed the money. And I got myself into it. Okay, you, 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 <sighs> okay. As much as I want to, like, regular kill you, I'm going to try to do it with some kindness. Some sympathy. Look, I just want I'm being sympathetic, bitch. Don't fucking interrupt me. Now, whatever happened, might happen. You got choices. You've also got the choice to not get pregnant until you're ready, dick. Give me the money when you can get me the money, and I'll get it back to the right people. Oh, no, don't, don't, oh, okay. okay. Damn, I can feel all my anger getting up off of me. You are like the kindest woman I have. I'm going to get you your money. Somehow, I don't know, but I'm gonna get your money back. Thank you, girl. Thank you. Man, <laughs> I get it now about being nice to people, you know? You give a little bit of yourself, and the feeling you get back just kind of... That bitch stole my wallet. You over there, little bitch? You still over there? You better run. Get the fuck out of here. And of course, right when you think you got all your nonsense dealt with, that's when you realize some bullshit is never going away. What's going on? We've had a little pre-meeting. Mm -hmm. And we've decided to vote Ramadan off the island. Out. Off. He's right. Out. He's got to go. We don't, we don't want no thugs working here. Hmm. He says bitch more than I say bitch. And I say bitch all the time. That bitch has got to go. Got to go. Got to go, that bitch. Really? You all decided that? Yes. Huh, OK. First of all, you do realize that this is the first time that every one of you has ever been early for work? Second, what do you mean vote? What does that $15 stencil job on the window say? Open from 10 to 6, except Mondays? We accept food stamps. Calvin's. <laughs> it says Calvin's. So I don't want to hear nothing else about Romadile working here, OK? This is Calvin's barbershop. Romadale stays until my wife decides it's time for him to go. Fuck you very much. Oh,